When speaking of building and maintaining an offshore wind farm, a port and its infrastructure are very crucial. Because for a port, an offshore wind farm is actually a logistical challenge. Now, Port of Sender is one of the pioneers. They have a lot of experience, and that's why we warmly welcome Wim Stubbe, who's business development manager of Port Ostende, and who will tell us more about the obstacles and solutions regarding harbor logistics. He does that together with Erik Bertole, who is business manager offshore wind of Groningen Seaports, and with Torsten Müller Gregersen, uh, who is business developer of Vordingborg Ergverf. And who will also speak of a Danish port that has specifically chosen to become a port where offshore related activities are possible. We're very interested to hear these three men. Gentlemen, the floor is yours. Good day. It is a pleasure to say a few words on this occasion. In the country with the highest density in offshore wind farms, uh, consideration with the shortest coastline in Europe. From Eemshaven, we highly appreciate the exchange of information which we share with the Port of Oostend. In the Into Power project, also the connection of the supply chain of the NNOW network in the Northern Netherlands with the Belgium offshore cluster and the POM has resulted and proven to be successful. I wish you a very successful, uh, regretfully virtual event from Eemshaven. Hi, I am Thorsten Gregersen from Business Development Manager in Bordingborg Business. We have Clintholm Port, which originally was a minor fishing village with intensive tourism and pleasure boats during the summer. However, Clintholm is located as a natural gateway to the Baltic Sea. I guess you all are familiar here with the EU ambition of more than 90 gigawatt of offshore wind power in the Baltic. Therefore, we have started a process to make further investments in Clintholm Port, since this is a natural choice for operation and maintenance in the western part of the Baltic. At present, Clintholm Port is O&M port for two wind farms. We hope to expand the port to allow further four to six operators which match the wind farms in the near Baltic in pipeline. To ensure that the operators can have success, we also strive to motivate service providers to establish departments in Boingbor. In April, we can welcome our first service provider who works with safety education. Based on our analysis, we can create more than 500 direct and derivative jobs in, if our investments are successfully completed. For us, it is important constantly to ensure good facilities for the direct operators, to ensure skilled service providers, and finally, that our local businesses are ready to serve the industry 24-7. Our ambition is to make the Baltic Sea offshore hub so we can benefit from the realization of the EU decision. Thanks for your attention. Many thanks, Thorsten, and heartily bedankt, Erik. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank both speakers for their presentation. Um, they are not chosen um, random. They are chosen because of they give an example of, uh, let's say, a mature offshore wind port, which is the port of Groningen, and which has uh, quite a lot of, uh, let's say, experiences and has a long-term vision, and a newcomer in the market of the offshore ports, which is Clintholm, port of Clintholm, which is a smaller port uh, and part of the area of the port of Warding Work, which has chosen now to step into the facilitating of uh, harbor logistics at the Baltic Sea. Because that's the topic that I will uh, concern here in this uh, short speech is a little bit about offshore harbor logistics. Um, where are the obstacles? Where are the solutions? Where are the challenges? and how we can match uh, these uh, challenges. I have issues with the slides. If somebody can uh, help me with the slides because they don't move. Yeah, oops, that's too much. Okay, what I would like to, sp to speak about is uh, offshore, lo offshore logistics, offshore harbor logistics. Um, first, what is harbor logistics? Then I would like to go to the obstacles for SMEs and SME ports. Um, 
then I would like to speak about the future challenges. And finally, I want to present a small business case. Hope it works now this time. Oops, we go backwards. Ik gebruik deze niet te kraan. Yeah, thank you. Uh, maybe you can push the slides because otherwise. Uh, no, no, it's okay. The the scheme is fine. The previous one, please. Thank you. Um, so what we what this hard logistics? Um, unfortunately, this is a little bit small, but we speak about in the first place by planning and surveying of the different activities at the seabed um, offshore. Secondly, we speak all about the project logistics, which is bringing the different components of the offshore wind farms uh, together at the port. Uh, third element is definitely the installation and uh, commissioning. Uh, fourth chapter of this harbor logistics concerns the operation and maintenance. And last but not least is the decommissioning chapter. For each of these kind of operations, so we have identified five streams of uh, logistic operations, specified and special um, vessels are in use. And the ports and the SMEs have to be able to work with these kind of uh, vessels uh, in any condition at sea. Next slide, please. Um, what are the obstacles for the SME and the SME ports in harbor logistics? Um, I can say there are um, plenty. There are um, a lot of uh, obstacles that can be identified. Simple uh, element in this uh, gremium is definitely the mar maritime component. Um, the cost of working at sea is three times the cost of working at land. Simple statement, but it has an effect, especially for SMEs, if they want to op make operations at sea. Secondly, the technolo technological developments. Um, if we see over 10 years in Groningen, the port of Groningen and the port of Ostende, what has happened in 10 years' time in the offshore industry, I mean, there is a huge um, innovation track that has been uh, uh, organized and that has been affected. How, as an SME and an SME port, how can you match these kind of innovations and tendencies? Third element, very important, is the legal framework. Um, there is an issue definitely with uh, uh, liabilities on one hand, and I heard the ministers this morning saying that she wants to be extremely boring, so I only can applaud for that because a stable legal framework is especially necessary for SMEs. Uh, please do not forget the red tape, which is very much uh, in case, especially if you want to work cross-border. Another obstacle is the economic setting. Um, on the one hand, markets, even if you're working on a transnational market, the regulations are quite often defined on a national and national uh, basis. This makes things quite complicated in order for an SME to work in different markets. It's an obstacle which needs to be uh, worked on. Another element is human resources. Um, skilled workers are necessary for the SMEs, for the bigger companies. But of course, an SME cannot pay the same salaries as the bigger companies. Access to finances is for an SME definitely an issue. Um, we all know that uh, the financial sector has, is suffering from corona sclerosis. Um, and they keep their money on, in their pockets instead of spending it and investing in the industry. Last point, which is quite important as well, is the issue with the stakeholders. Um, some of the maritime stakeholders are claiming the monopoly of uh, certain areas at sea and make life for SMEs sometimes difficult. Next slide, please. What you see here is a small example of the port of Videsana in Denmark, where a small uh, shipyard is working together with Vestas in order to use drones for positioning and maintenance. Uh, it gives an example where the port, port of Videsana, a shipyard, an SME, and the bigger industry can work together. Practical, pragmatic testing in the port area. Yes, please. Um, future challenges. It has been already mentioned by my colleague from uh, Fording Bork, I have. Um, there are very high ambitions on the level of the Commission on installing offshore wind power. Um, this is an, kind of an uh, overview of the potential market for the next year, still 2030. Uh, whereby that a lot of activities need to be ex executed uh, at sea by different companies and ports uh, in the next years. Yes, please. What are the future challenges? Um, it has been mentioned by previous speakers. Um, new technologies, 
are for SMEs an, a challenge and an opportunity. Um, I refer to the importance of data, um, which has become coming up more and more important in the recent years. And of course, also the accessibility to data. Have the uh, SMEs access to the data which are relevant for doing their operation. Another challenge is definitely the greening of the offshore uh, operations. Um, up till now, I would say um, maintenance and installation is done with, uh, um, let's say, traditional fueled ships. But of course, if you work in renewable energy and producing green energy, um, is there not an opportunity and a chance to go into green fueling and uh, implementing uh, CO2-free emission or emission-free uh, fueling? A challenge. Um, reorganization of the supply chain. Um, there is quite a lot of uh, activities which is going on in the supply chain. Um, in the first place, we are facing the issue of big, bigger and biggest, where we were working with uh, turbines of 2.4 megawatts. Now today, 8.5, 10 megawatt is becoming a standard and the tests are being done with uh, wind turbines of 50 megawatt, which means bigger sizes, bigger um, output. So this will bring uh, quite a lot of um, um, challenges for the SMEs to work on that. And secondly, also for the ports, which have to work with that. Um, decommissioning, another issue. Where is the business case? Needs to be found out. Another uh, transnational project called Decom Tools is working on that, where people from Norway till Flanders are working together uh, on this issue. Upcoming markets is another challenge. And then I speak both technically as uh, in the field of competition. Um, the floating wind turbines are coming up. Uh, they're getting to a stage that they're quite uh, mature. And uh, the first uh, test pilots are put into the sea. So another market is coming up with other demands, other facilities, and some of the uh, challenges uh, need to be investigated to tackle them. As to the competition, we all know that uh, in China, things are moving very fast and the market there is uh, getting very hot, bringing a straightforward competition into um, global level. Another challenge is the production of green hydrogen, whereby the interconnection between um, the offshore wind parks and, uh, and the production of uh, hydrogen on land or at sea uh, is a key issue and a question which needs to be investigated. I think this is a challenge which where both major companies and SMEs have a role to play. Another challenge coming up is the, are the energy islands. Um, Port of Esbjerg, or colleagues from Port of Esbjerg, are um, involved in the preparation of this kind of um, activity. Yes, please. What you see here is, of course, the float an, an, an example of a floating wind turbine, which is tested in Greek waters. Yes, please. Um, to give a small example of uh, business cooperation between SMEs, and I will refer to my own sector, which is the port business, I would like to give the example of the OAPP, the Offshore Wind Ports Platform, which is a functional cluster. It's not a nationalistic cluster. It's uh, not. We are not waving flags uh, to say that we are the best. Uh, we are a functional cluster where we try to work together as uh, ports from different countries in order to share the best practices on the one hand, and also to open a conversation and a discussion with the policymakers and the industry. Um, today, uh, we are 20 ports involved. We have started in 2016, 2017 with five ports. Um, what do they represent? Um, they represent 450 hectares of dedicated space for offshore wind industry and about 8,000 megawatts installed capacity for uh, maintenance uh, of wind turbines. The typology of the ports is very different. We have ports who go the whole way, the long way, from going from uh, preparations phase till decommissioning. Others have a very specific role to play in the field of uh, maintenance or other activities. Um, their role in the ports is also to contribute, contribute to cost reduction of the production of the electricity. Um, Together with the industry, they develop uh, some kind of, uh, let's say, procedures and um, technologies whereby the cost of the production of the energy can be reduced. The biggest or the nicest example that we can give here is uh, 
the rural pontoons that have been uh, installed in the port of Hull, in Esbjerg and Cuxhaven, and at the port of Ostende, whereby that uh, heavyweight nacelles can be rolled off and on uh, the ships in order to prepare the installation of the offshore wind parks. Are there challenges? Yes, definitely. Uh, a sport uh, organization, a sport platform, uh, we, we see a lot of challenges next to the challenges that we have uh, discussed a little bit before. Space in ports becomes a big issue. The European Commission has very high ambitions, um, wants to install quite a lot of capacity. Some speak about 70 gigawatt, others 90, others 112, 115 gigawatt. So whatever, uh, name it and uh, you will get it. Um, this is definitely um, a challenge whereby cooperation between uh, ports will be relevant in order to be able to install, to make the installation of the offshore wind parks in the future. Second issue is definitely, uh, it has been proven by um, the different um, uh, examples that the investments of port infrastructure contribute to the reduction of the costs of the production of electricity. Considering the bigger and bigger and bigger offshore wind turbines, investment in port infrastructure is necessary. Today, we are happy that the Commission, European Commission, is recognizing the role of ports, not only as, let's say, logistic players in the uh, trade market, but also as a center for energy production and energy storage, and as uh, centers for blue industry. This is for us very important, but we would like to see it more translated in practical dimensions. Are there dangers? Definitely there are dangers um, also coming up. Um, whereby that we see that the situation of the industry is getting to, um, let's say, oligopoly. A limited number of producers are still in the market. Um, and therefore, it's very important that we keep open the discussion and the conversation with the industry, especially to understand what are their demands and in order to be able to organize the pipeline of projects in the near future. On the other, second danger is that um, the focus goes too much to the cost factor and not to the sustainability factor. Of course, some of the companies are focusing on their shareholders, but um, as it has been proven by the, my colleague Thorsten from uh, Vordingborg Erhef and Clint Home Port, um, the offshore wind industry has also an important role to play in the community building and in the community development. Uh, if you can show that you have uh, 500 new jobs coming to your uh, community in your port, I think this is really an, an important asset for further community building. What you see here is a visit of the port of Gdynia at the port of Ostende last summer, uh, I would say uh, after summer, uh, where we have been sharing our experiences together with um, Siemens uh, in order to see how they can prepare their offshore um, terminal at the port of Gdynia. Um, I would like to thank you for your attention and um, I wish you all um, good offshore wind uh, conference and drink afterwards. Thank you.